Well played, Ishida. I see what you did there. Having everybody united as one in a Thanksgiving Day release for this chapter? Well played. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's the phrase that has been circulating since Dragon was born. The pieces were coming together slowly, but it is safe to say that this chapter made it complete. While it is going to be shaky in terms of agreement, this can be a sign for a bright future. How about that? A bright future in Tokyo Ghoul? I would never guess. In a rare sight for the beholder, the chapter delivers the sincere and good-hearted moment of ghoul and human joining hands in unity. It's so strange how the series is looking to have a bright future. Is this the happy ending we thought it wasn't possible to begin with? Is it what Furuta calls it super peace? Is this the end of the story? While I still maintain my opinion of third part, it certainly gains my maximum interest on how it will end before taking it to the next step. Kimi has gotten mature. She was a kind and normal girl that finds Ghoul fascinating or beautiful. Now she seems very intellect with her choice of words and studies to provide the understanding of Dragon. Origami was used for an example of Kagane's origin so to speak, which is something I thought I wouldn't hear from her. The 2 year time skip plus did wonder to her. Anyway, it is referenced due to how Kagane can be expandable and based on Kano's research, consuming a large amount of Kagoho only adds more layers to it. That explains why Kaneki's Kagane, or for that matter, the first One-Eyed King has a huge sized Kagane roaming around the city. The good news is that it can die out when leaving as it is. The bad news is that it would take at least 200 years. Yes, make sure you message your future great 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 grandson to take a picture of Tokyo with deceased dragon. The other option that could perhaps take just as long as 200 years is to locate the main body, Kaneki, and eliminate it from his core. It's basically what Hide has in mind from the last chapter. It's just going to be a huge pain to find it, especially that Dragon is expected to wake up soon. Then the chapter enters a surprising turn of event and without a doubt, the main highlight of the arc so far with plenty of significant moments. Ghoul and human are all in one area. It's equivalent to the impression of cats and dogs living together. It feels surreal to see them without murdering one another. One slip up and hell will be made inside. It's amusing that one of CCG investigators noticed Almam in there because they won't believe that he's a ghoul now. It could have been the worst train wreck in history if it wasn't for Hide, out of all people, to make it possible. It's not without a lot of indifference feelings, even Marude, despite the fact he is siding at least with one ghoul, Masude, asking everyone there is ludicrous. The confrontation between Hide and Marude is amusing and uplifting. You got to love how Hide is all cool with the whole potential bloodbath scene. Marude was the only one that was losing his cool about the plan to work together with Ghoul to end Dragon. He even shouts on what he's doing are impossible. And Hide casually said, yep, best friend of the century here. He finally let it out and exposed that Dragon is Kaneki. And this is where a lot of commotion come in. You have people lost since they thought the king is dead. You have Psycho now know that my man is the ruler of this, in which got me on, I gotta be honest with you. And Furuta is exposed to be a piece of shit. I was happy that Uri is the one to expose Furuta and his horrible intention, even though he was used by him as well. If anything, this moment should make him the next bureau chief of CCG. That said, he has one problem the ideology behind it. While he is no longer burdened by Furuta, it doesn't take away his hatred against Ghoul and everyone else is in an agreement. It can't change like that and that's understandable. At the very least, he gives Ghouls a chance to leave before it goes straight to hell. Alma finally got into the spotlight and I have waited for this for a while. This part is great as well because this accumulates to Udi's hatred against Ghoul and Alma breaking in to reject his belief. It got to the point that CCG's model is to kill Ghoul and that's it. In other words, 
it's good to kill people. And that's disturbing. Alman finally got to share his belief at CCG and said it like he should be the bureau chief, though he won't go for it. The point is, CCG is meant to bring in peace above anything because that's what they strive for. That's why they exist for. I like the fact that every bystander can understand carefully among themselves and why they are in a shambled state. They are fickle on their feelings, whether it stems from fear or false justice. It adds a great cherry on top with Psycho, siding with Alma. Those past developments truly pay off well and it was just so charming to see how far she matured. Arguably the best moment is the removal of all Goo's mask. I gotta comment on the visual because it's top notch solid with his conveying the emotional scene. There are so many good ones in here with meaningful impact to the character. It deeply realized the developments they all have went through and they're sharing it to the world. With the mask removal scene, it is powerful. I'm glad that it didn't go to exposition on why it is. Simply put, Ghoul have lived in hiding for a long time. Removing it now says that they are willing to share their identity to the world because there's nothing to fear anymore. And all this time, what's behind it is a human. There's like no difference. It's like some Twilight Zone plot twist, but in a good way. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Speaking of beauty, Toko as herself is always delightful to see. I love she calls bullshit on pride. It is a sin for a reason everyone. She couldn't give a shit about any of that. It will only beg for death if they keep those selfish prides to themselves. While it is funny for that one guy to call her cute, it does speak volume on how their vision no longer in delusion. It's such a well crafted chapter. It finally ends with one charming moment with Suzuya. It's such a striking development because Ishida carefully addresses his character to be connected with Shinohara but only because he was like a child being taught by his father. In nearly every moment of his, he reflects back to him. That all said, he is no longer a child that needs a caretaker. He's now an adult. Monade, the guy who lost his bite to Suzuya is the one to give him an adult advice to open his eyes. That's just fantastic. It's not to say to forget Shinohara altogether. Rather, Suzuya is a person that can befriend, work, and share his opinion with others. If he feels that working together with ghouls is a good idea, then go for it. That charming smile is another powerful moment. It's as if he is no longer tied by chains and can make his own decision. It makes sense on why the mention of his popularity has to be said in order for this moment to even happen. And it's so sublime. Now everyone is on the same page. Is this really peace? If so, then Tokyo shall be reborn. It's a very sincere and captivating chapter that accumulates every development from each individual into one grand proportion of event. They have come a long way to this moment, but if this remained the same with some tweaks, then it's safe to say that a happy ending is possible, even if it doesn't last long after it's said and done. One thought came to my mind. It feels good, doesn't it? The moral of the story is, Furuta is the coolest guy ever. What are your thoughts of this chapter? Do you believe we're going to have a happy ending? Do you believe this peace is permanent? I would like to be optimistic and say yes. This is it. This is the peace we have been dying for. Who could mess it up? Who? Well, actually, don't answer that. I like to live in a dream. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.